and welcome back to another episode of The Knitter's Closet. Today is July 15th and this is episode 3 of The Knitter's Closet. For everybody joining us for the first time, thank you and for all the new viewers, welcome back. Um, my name is Melissa. You can find me on Ravelry as Darwin Kitty with one T and Instagram as Melissa K Plants. Um, the Knitter's Closet is literally my closet. <laughs> Hence the name. And I've been knitting for about 10 years and just wanted to start a podcast to talk with everybody. Um, so news, you'll notice I have a brighter lighting. We replaced the light bulbs that we had had in the closet with some daylight bulbs. So hopefully this will give a little bit better lighting for us. Um, you'll notice that I didn't post the slow video um, for the vanilla socks. The video just did not want to upload. I have no idea what's going on with it. And I went to go and record a new one and the holder that I use for the phone to kind of um, video record over my shoulder, <laughs> it broke. <laughs> so I have the setup to do the talking podcast, but I don't have the setup to do the slow knitting. So hopefully I'll be able to get a new one in the next couple of days and be able to get out a slow knitting podcast or a new episode and I'll probably end up having to redo an entire episode. Um, but that's okay because I always have plenty of vanilla socks on the go and I may end up um, doing a slow video of a new pattern I have in my head that I need to get out. Um, so I have, if you watch my first episode, you'll know that I'm a new sweater knitter and I have knit three, four, five, five sweaters. Um, three for my daughter, two for me. I'm actually on another sweater now and I'll be sharing those to those today during the whips uh, for my husband. And uh, I, just, I, I just, I have this idea in my head for this absolutely adorable little sweater and it came to me because of the um, one of the sweaters actually finished this week. So, oh, so an, another sweater. Um, and it was inspired by the yarn itself. So, hence the um, idea for the pattern. So, hopefully I'll be working on that and I might, might publish a pattern. I do have one published pattern. Um, they're called My Precious Socks and they're on Ravelry if you look for me on Ravelry. Um, just a, a fairly simple patterned um, socks. So, that's uh, all I have for news today. I just wanted to update you with some FOs. I've actually been pretty busy um, doing some knitting. I whipped up a pair of Sportweight Felici Knit Pick socks um, and a self-striping yarn uh, last weekend. Yeah, last weekend, I think. Weekend before. And um, I don't have them with me because they were a gift from someone or for someone. So... I'll insert a picture here through the magic of technology um, and they've been received by the the um, gifty uh, or gift yeah gifty so <laughs> I can post a picture without spoiling any surprises um, and they were just plain vanilla socks and I also knit her a little pink um, cat hat I don't know if I have a picture of that but it's you know like like one of these hats Ugh. Like the little, oh, this is a, yeah, kind of like one of those hats. So this is my little bag from that clever, oops, uh, that clever Clementine. You can find her online. So, um, I did a little rearranging this weekend or last week. Um, God, I've got a bowl. I stole this idea from the yarn hoarder and I've got a bowl with um, all the different yarns of sweaters I've knit up in here so um, hopefully I'll fill that up <laughs> pretty quickly um, so for other FOs I got I got my fingerless mitts done um, Schmutz on. So these are the fingerless mitts by their success six sacks mitts. Um 
by Heidi Alander. What's the name of it? And of course, I'll put all of these down in the. Um, I'll put these running across the screen. So I knit these. Um, they fit me fine. I I was telling you in the last episode that I knit them for. Um, uh, a trip I was supposed to take in January. Well, I did take the trip. I was supposed to finish them for a trip in January um, for some cold weather we had. And I f finished finished them, and then I realized that my patterning is off. <laughs> You'll notice there's supposed to be a little point. See, this is the correct way to do it. <laughs> and this is the wrong way to do it. So my one little stitch is off. Um, or my three stitch, I think it's the, the three stitches here are off by one. <laughs> so, um, good news is, however, they fit my daughter perfectly. So she's going to be getting these. Um, and these were knit out of the Big Bad Wool. It's their Pee Wee, Pee Wee Packa, um, base, which is a, a fingering with alpaca. Um, and wool, just red, uh, merino and alpaca, and the colors are the charcoal and the lilac. Super, oh, it's super soft, and they're super warm. So those are done, and then I finished Nora's sweater. This is the Harbor, um, the Harbor Pullover by Heidi May. And I think now that we got some better lighting, you can kind of see that it's, it's this beautiful um, dusty rose color, but it's also got these hints of denim and white. It's kind of tweedy, um, kind of tweedy. It is tweedy because it was knit out of the Barocco um, Tuscan tweed that I got from All About Yarn in Columbia, which is unfortunately, sadly, now closed. And the color is the oh so exciting 9010. Um, and that's the Harbor Pullover by Heidi May. And it's got a little cowl neck to it. Nice long turtley neck. And I fold it over and it fits her beautifully. So I'm very happy about that. And that's it for FOs. Oh no, no, no. Mm -mm. Nope. This is. This is my FO. I haven't blocked it yet. I literally just cast it off Thursday or Friday. Um, it's just a little cardigan for me. And it's called Practically by Kelly Herdreich. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. This is actually the Miss Babs Yowza in Biker Chick and it's just basically um, not quite a cropped cardigan because it does come down to my hips but it is a um, it won't button up it's just meant to basically just barely cover and you can see it comes I still have to block it but all my ends are weak and it comes down just above my hip um, now I will say that the pattern called for like 800 yards, I'm out of camera, there we go, called for like 800 yards of the Miss Babs Wowza in my size, um, 800 plus yards. And I did not, I got gauge, but I did not use nearly that much. And I will show you, um, one second. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> crap. I caked up two skeins of the Yowza because Yowza only comes in like 560 gram skeins. 560 yards. <laughs> I got that right. Um, so Miss Babs, Wowza, and the colorway is Biker Chick. Now I caked up the two skeins because I figured even if I didn't, you if, if I used the entire skein, I would still need to have some left over. So I caked them up both. Um, I'm glad I did because when I caked them up, I want to show you this is the same exact colorway. This is this is craziness. Okay, so you see this beautiful, beautiful cake of yarn. These absolutely deep, gorgeous colors. Um, these rusty browns, 
and grays and oranges. Absolutely gorgeous colorway, right? And I have a coveted this colorway for many, many years. And I finally picked up a skein. I picked up two skeins of it in Maryland Sheep and Wool this year. And I picked up two skeins because I wanted to knit a sweater for myself. And again, they come in 560 yard skeins. This is the second skein. <laughs> so you can see the difference. Isn't that crazy? It's the same colors, but like you could tell this is like at the beginning of the dye pot and maybe at the bottom of the dye pot. And they're both beautiful. They're both absolutely beautiful. Now, when I picked them up, I didn't notice the drastic color difference. So it's on me. Um, Miss Babs doesn't really have dye lots, and most indie dyers don't, which is fine, and I know that. So I'm glad I picked up and caked both of these skeins because if I had just used this one and then gotten all the way to the end and needed a little bit more and then caked this one up, I would have been so mad. So I caked up both of them and I ended up um, carrying both yarns. You can't see it because I just carried them up the sides. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. You can kind of see that I carried this is the side I didn't carry them up and then this is the side so it's a little bulkier on the side it's not too noticeable but I just carried the two yarns up the side and I just every other row so and it ended up being an absolutely beautiful fabric and you can't even tell that there are two massively different colorways in them and I absolutely love it it's so pretty I have a um I'm gonna block it today because I really really want to wear it this week in the office because I have a really cute um just kind of dressy tank top blouse and I want to wear this over top because um, it does get cold in the office but anyway so the pattern that I have in my head has been inspired by this yarn because I really really want to pair this yarn um, with these little this patterning with some little fair isle um, black hearts just kind of like around the yoke and I haven't decided whether or not I want it to be a pullover cardigan or a pullover yet or a cardigan. Haven't decided. Um, haven't decided the sleeve length. I've just picked out the yoke <laughs> and the pattern for the yoke and, and how I want to do it. Um, and I think I'm going to do two little lines of the black hearts going across. And I, I don't know if I'll alternate them or if they'll be together. Again, it's an idea, it's in my head, it'll be out, <laughs> and um, hopefully it'll be really cute when it's done and you guys will love it, and you know, maybe purchase a pattern, who knows. Um, so that's my other FO this week, and that was the Practically by Kelly Herdrick in the Miss Babs Wowza. You know, I have better, better show notes this week, because, um, yeah, I have... I have issues with memory and getting things completely wrong and and uh, yeah <laughs> my apologies to the not house <laughs> for not being able to get your name right for whatever reason okay so um whips um, I am I cast on another pair of vanilla socks these are in my exploding tardis bag um, a little blue whirly pattern underneath. This is um, a bag a friend made me, so it's not a bag for sale. This is um, a pair of socks, and these are for somebody that I'm knitting them for. So and she has very similar feet to me. So she, I wear a size six, and she wears a size seven. So that'll be excellent. So these are just plain vanilla stockinette socks, two at a time, toe up. And um, call me crazy, but I am knitting them on 2.25 millimeter um, needles. And these are my signatures, signature sharps. Look how sharp and pointy those are. Yeah. Um, I love, love sharp needles. Um, I do not know the name of this yarn because this was a super, super, super deep stash dive. Uh, I basically just pulled out a whole bunch of colors because she said she loved purple and took pictures and sent her pictures and I mean I'm doing two at a time but it's from one ball so one's from coming from the outside one's coming from the inside just in case you're wondering um so I just I, I took a couple of pictures of some single skeins of purple yarn and some blues because she said she liked blues too 
and she ended up really liking this one the best and it was already caked up so very convenient however I had long since lost the tag for it I do know it's super washed because um, anything in my stash that is more than two years old is going to be super washed because I was um, I had it was, this is probably like four or five years old so it's deep deep stash for me at least because even though I've been knitting for 10 years um, I've really only been buying major yarn it, well you know what it could be older than that um, a fancy yarn not major yarn, fancy yarn, for probably six or seven of those years. So I, and because I wasn't knitting sweaters or other items, and I was really only knitting socks and shawls, I would just buy one skein of yarn, one skein of sock yarn, you know, individual sock yarn. Beautiful as it is. But I would always, always make sure that it was super wash wool because I just um, didn't, didn't really appreciate uh, other blends of yarns until recently so everything was probably like an 80 20 uh, super wash merino and so I can almost guarantee that that's what it is so yeah other riffs Ooh, um, today I am drinking ice water because <laughs> it is really hot in my closet today um, this is my Nikki's makes Nikki makes cup Isn't that pretty so this um, this pattern that you see is actually a fabric by a custom fabric designer called backstitch you can find them on Facebook it's backstitch one word and this is from their sketchy round so these are all hand-drawn by the owner of the company and what Nikki does is she takes, and I don't know if you can see the glitter, see the sparkles? Um, she takes the fabric and she epoxies them onto these tumblers. So um, she's on Facebook, she doesn't have a group, but if she gives me permission to post a link to her profile page, I will um, absolutely do that and then you can Facebook message her because uh, these are amazing the quality is really really good and then of course she uses high quality tumblers so um, my tumblers I put in ice in it one day and I came back to work I had left it on my desk at work accidentally I came back and there was still ice in my drink the next day um, sorry for a second I just realized that there's a little bit of fiber in my glass <laughs> I just don't want to drink it so yeah fiber? Oh, it might have been a gnat that got in there. Lovely. Okay. Even better. <laughs> a little fiber, right? Now I have a little extra protein, too. Alright. So, that's um, a new whip. The socks. I'm finishing up those. I got a lot of progress done on Joe's sweater. Do -do -do. I finished the band! Yay! <laughs> so, I finished the bottom of his sweater. Um, this is the flax, the worsted version, in, by Tin Can Knits. And I, as you can see, I don't have sleeves yet. So funny story is I had, ah, I dropped stitches. Oh no. I just accidentally opened my stitch marker and dropped stitches. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to very gently now place this on my desk so that I can fix that in a little bit. Um, so I, uh, I finished the band of that and I really, really just did not want to cast on sleeves. So that's when I cast on my practically <laughs> to avoid knitting the sleeves. So, um, I'm still working on that and that's in the test designer yarns, test designer yarns and the 100% super wash and she doesn't have colorways. So, she just uh, sells. If you ever go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, her booth, it can be a little confusing because she sorts everything by colors. And she doesn't um, have prices on anything. So, basically, when you walk into the booth, 
the people working the booth hand you a little pamphlet and you have to figure out the prices from the tags and everything. So it can be a little overwhelming if you're not used to knitting, um, or if, if you're not used to that style of, of booth. But if you dive in and you take a look and figure out what you need and what you want, oh God, she's got the best prices for this wool. Like, I think, if I remember correctly, I think I paid less than $40 for one skein of this and it has 560 yards so it's pretty comparable to the skeins from Miss Babs Yowza's. Um, her, hers is you know again 100% superwash merino so it's basically the same quality and they're massive massive skeins of yarn and I think I paid around either less than or around $40 it's not a bad not a bad value at all. Um, I got some work done on the 10 stitch blanket. That one is, I got about, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I think I got about two, two and a half rows done, maybe. I know that, um, I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, I did join a ball of yarn, so and I'm, I'm like halfway through this one, so. Um, this is the Knit Picks Felici in Rustic Cabin, and it's a self-striping of, so, oh, those are my FOs. I don't have uh, a lot of whips. Oh, I did, um, I frogged my cloudy Sunday. I posted on Instagram, but, um, yeah, so the cloudy Sunday that I had posted about last week where I had just needed to finish the cowl and <laughs> and then weave in the ends so I finished you're gonna love this I finished the um the cowl part I finished it I cast off I seamed I did everything except weave in the ends and then today I went to go redo the seams because I don't like the way the seams sat which is all me I just I it's the first time seaming a sweater and I just, I didn't like the way they sat on me. Um, but then I was like, you know, I tried it on again and I, I just, I, I wasn't loving it on me. And it's not the fault of the pattern. The pattern is beautifully written. It's not the fault of the yarn. I mean, it's acrylic, but it's a really, really good acrylic. It's the Knit Picks Brava in the bulky weight. And it's the Summer Solstice, Summer Solstice Heather color. Solstice Summer this heather color um and great wool well great yarn um great pattern and it just wasn't for me I just I ended up really just not liking it as much as I thought I would so I frogged it <laughs> I ripped the whole sucker out I've probably got about 10 different sizes of different balls because some of them are like little tiny ones and some of them are bigger so that's what it is but this will make uh something else beautiful it is what it is. Um, I, I'm actually kind of speeding through this one. This one might be a little short. I have some acquisitions. I didn't get any fiber, but I did get some new things. So, again, I know I told you guys I, I, I watched the yarn order, and she did have a new episode this week. So yeah, it was like two and a half hours, and I had to watch it in stretches. <laughs> so, um, but she always touts on about these little little tags that she puts on. Um, these are the foldable ones. So you fold on one side and it's the little heart. And then when you fold, when you fold it up, it says handmade with love. So I got some of these and this pretty gray color. It's pretty neutral. Um, she goes on about these all the time. They're from a company called Grain Deep. And these are the faux leather ones. And then these are the faux suede ones. And here I'll show you the card the card see it comes up I'm trying to get it to focus here it doesn't want to focus I'll put their information down at the bottom but they're on Etsy at graindeep.etsy.com and they're laser engraved tags they're so pretty it's so soft this is the faux suede one and it says, take care, hand wash, dry flat. 
Um, and they have other options like machine wash, gentle, um, tumble dry, stuff like that. Uh, I got this one because I'm just going to tell... Oh, shaking my camera. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to tell my husband that if it looks like it's hand knit or if it looks like it's knit at all, just, just throw it in a pile and don't touch it. I usually do the laundry anyway, but he's, he's pretty good about taking care of hand knits. And some of the stuff that I've gotten lately, however, is not super wash, which is what he's used to. So, um, I just got to make sure I warn him. Like, I mean, you know, I wear leggings a lot and he makes sure he's, he hangs, dries those. So he's pretty good at that. Um, I bought a palm palm maker to, uh, not today, a couple days ago. So when I rearranged, I rearranged my stash a little bit on these um, pocket drawers over here. So, and I came up with like three of those tube buckets full of um, scraps. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do with all these? Some of them are tiny. Some of them are really tiny. So I decided I would get a pom-pom maker so that I can make some really awesome pom-poms. And I might make myself a little mobile or something. I don't know. Or they might be on for hats for charity because I knit charity hats every once in a while. Okay, and then I got some little ball sacks, which I think are the cutest name ever. <laughs> Cute relative term. Funniest name, best name, I don't know. So they're these little tiny bags and they got a flat bottom. This one hasn't been used yet, so it's still really nice and stiff. Um, this one has little Little sugar skull puppies. I think the Spanish, I think they're supposed to be like Alegrijes. My daughter behind, my daughter's bedroom is, is literally behind my wall. So she's in there playing. So I apologize if you hear some banging noises. Um, I'm probably butchering the Spanish saying of that. So like spirit animals, so to speak. So, um, and it's got two little snaps and you can thread your yarn through here. And these one, this one is, I got two, um, both from the same company. And it is Crochet One Knit Two, and she's on Etsy. Um, very fast shipping. I got these within a couple of days, I think. Um, this is my other one. I've used this one a little bit when my 10 stitch blanket by, um, that I worked on. This one is in the Gasly's fabric, which I absolutely love 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 this fabric it is the coolest most creepy fabric i mean look at this little baby with the heart <laughs> a little girl walking a wolf i love these this fabric it's great so i got these two um really really cute so your yarn just sits there they're kind of like basically a fabric yarn bowl so um I didn't really need them, but I really liked them, so I got them. Isn't that a way? In isn't that the way with all fiber-related stuff? And then my last acquisition. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. So this is from a group, Stitches a Miss, and she is on Etsy, and she's also on Facebook. Oops. Um, her shop on Etsy is Stitches Amiss, and again, and on Facebook she is Stitches Amiss, and then you can follow her on Instagram at me stitches. Oh no, wait, follow me. <laughs> stitches underscore Amiss on Instagram, and she makes the most beautiful bags. And when I say bags, I'm not talking like project bags. She makes purses. Um, and I, she had gotten a custom order on this one and the customer fell through and she posted it on her Facebook page and she said, it's up for sale. I'll give you a discount. First one to comment. I was the first one to comment. And look at this. It's a, it's a messenger bag. So it comes with, this is the flap and it clasps into here. And then there's a really nice deep pocket. Nice little pocket, a little leather, and then you open it up, the fabric on the inside, and then a little pocket, a little zipper pocket, 
and it has, I'm going to use it as a knitting bag, but it's not really a knitting bag. It's got two little pockets on the side. Right? And then it's got a big ring on the back. And the reason it has a big ring on the back is because, oh, it has two D rings down at the bottom. So it has a big circular ring at the top and two D rings down on the bottom of the back, right? And the reason it has that is because this handle, I've got it set to its smallest setting right now, um, but this handle, you can expand it and make this messenger bag into a backpack. What? Magic. Absolute magic. So you can take these, unhook them from here, hook them down to the D-ring, run it through the loop, and then hook the other one down the D-ring, and then you've got yourself a little square backpack. And the reason I snagged this one, if you guys have been quick to notice, look at the fabric. Aww. <laughs> Hashtag brown coats for life. It's Firefly. Yep. Now the game picture on the back gets better. It's brown coats, it's firefly, it's shiny. I love it. It's mine. So um, the quality on this is absolutely amazing. You would probably never guess that it is handmade versus homemade. It's, I mean, there's, for me, there's a difference. Handmade doesn't necessarily mean that it looks like crap. You know, I, I think handmade is a very high quality of homemade. Homemade is, to me, it's made at home, but it's like a, like a, a novice crafter. You know what I mean? Like, handmade to me sounds more artisan. I don't know. Sometimes my stuff is homemade. Sometimes my stuff is handmade. So who knows? So those are my acquisitions for the week. Um... And I mentioned the pattern. Oh, uh, don't forget, we have the giveaway. I'll just remind you guys what's in store. Is the Stitches a Miss Rad Yarns for Rebels. And it is in the Unicorn Boogers colorway. And that is for our 100 subscribers. So once we get to 100 subscribers, we're going to give this bad boy away. Um, so go make sure that you comment, and preferably watch, um, episode two, <laughs> and which is technically my first talking episode, and comment with hashtag unicorn boogers. And once we hit 100 subscribers, I will be drawing from those comments. I cannot see if you're subscribed, um, your name. I can see how many subscribers I have. I cannot see what your names are. So if you don't comment, even if you're subscribed, you're not entered to win. Um, face, uh, not Facebook, ha YouTube has this thing where you can't see who your subscribers are um, until you reach a certain number of subscribers. And then on top of that, if you have your settings set to private, um, which includes your subscriptions, then I can't see that you're subscribed, even if I can see the names of who's subscribed. So, like, you can't see, like, if I subscribe to somebody right now, you can't see it because my setting is set to private, which I actually need to change. So, but, um, but anyway, my point is <laughs> that if you are subscribed and you have not commented on episode two with the hashtag unicorn boogers, you are not entered to win. You have to comment. I cannot see if you've subscribed because of the way YouTube works. So make sure you go back, comment on episode two, hashtag unicorn boogers, um, preferably watch because, you know, hopefully that's what you're here for, just not the giveaways. Um, so I think that's it, guys. That's a, that's, I, I felt like it was going to be a longer episode, but it's really, <laughs> it's really not this week. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, so... Oh, I didn't work on, I didn't work on any of my other whips. I did not work on my blanket slash tent slash 
slash sail for a boat. <laughs> I didn't work on that at all because it's been like 3,000 degrees and so I didn't want it in my lap. Uh, I didn't even want part of it in my lap. That's how hot it's been. So Today I'm probably going to be working on my boxy, my worsted bo boxy by Hohi Locatelli, which is still sitting somewhere around here. I've been working. Oh, it's behind. It's right in front of me. <laughs> Extreme close up. Sorry. It's my. Oh, uh, this is my bag. It says they weren't kidding when they called me Wella Witch. And it is in the black silos print from Back Backstitch Fabrics. Um, I don't know if she's back in stock with the tote bags, but for a while she had tote bags. And I scooped up one of these. So, um, yeah, so this is my, my boxy by Hohi Locatelli. I'm still in stockinette, um, hell, and it is knit in the Cascade 220 Superwash in the oh-so exciting colorway, 1949. So, that's probably going to be my project today, um, maybe, I don't know. Again, it's really hot, and I don't know if I feel like knitting a sweater. I may just cast on the pattern that's in my head. Uh, Nora's Nova is still in um, timeout because I'm still really not liking the colors. Um, then again, I may just, you know, I'm looking at all this pretty yarn in front of me and all this pretty yarn behind me, and I have this um, yarn from Hobbledehoy. I got, I got. I got this at Maryland the Sheep and Wool. I got five skeins of it. Um, this one is Tractor Tunnel Vision Roller Derby Fairy Cave. Got one. And Blackberry Moonshine. And I bought these skeins. I'm gonna get them all in one. <laughs> For a sweater, of course. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe I'll cast on the So Faded. I have like a bajillion sets of sweater quantity for the So Faded. Um, the, the Faded Pullover and the Faded Cardigan. Um, that everybody's doing right now. I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll cast on a a um. Here's another one. This is an old acquisition. I got this at Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. These are the Tempting Use yarn. And she's a local dyer, um, and it's a sparkly base. I don't know if you can see the sparklies. There you go. It's a little little sparkly. I bought these two skeins for a sweater for Nora. So maybe I'll maybe I'll kick these up and knit these <laughs> in a Nova for Nora because I don't like the other Nova. Who knows? I sorted all my yarns so that um, all my sweater quantities are in like two different two different bins. So <sighs> sorry, I dropped my hobbledy hoy. Um I love Hobbledy Hoy. If you have not um, been to Maryland Sheep and Wool and are familiar with Hobbledy Hoy, uh, she is actually the daughter of, I think it's the daughter, of Marigold Jen. Um, their mother or daughter team, uh, they're a, I say team, but they're, they have two different shops. So it's Marigold Jen and Hobbledy Hoy. Um, and Hobbledy Hoy also does fiber. They do fiber. Um, don't think Marigold Jen does, but I am always buying their yarns. They have the most gorgeous yarns. Um, I don't think I have any of Marigold Jen's handy at the moment, but every year when I go to Sheep and Wool, I stop at their booth and I get their yarns because they have beautiful, beautiful yarns. Okay, so I've done enough rambling. <laughs> don't forget the giveaway on... Episode 2, hashtag unicorns. 
I will hopefully get up a slow podcast ending soon. Again, my um, my camera thingy apparatus is broken, so it doesn't record over my shoulder. Um, and I'll be sure to uh, get that taken care of soon. And I may start the Ravelry group soon because I was thinking of doing a stash down with you guys. Um, not necessarily a cow just yet because I am terrible at cows. I think <laughs> I have been knitting for 10 years and I think I have successfully completed zero cows. <laughs> like zero. I'm so bad at them. I like, I don't know what it is about having a deadline and it just, just completely throws the joy out of knitting. I don't mind deadline knitting for gifts, but when it comes to deadline knitting for like a cowl or something, I just, it throws me off and I just end up not wanting to do it. And maybe it's just because, um, they were for cows for like shawls and, and I wasn't loving the shawls because of that. So I don't know. I don't know. So, but maybe we'll do a cowl when I finish my sweater pattern. Maybe we'll do that. Um, I may start the Ravelry group for the next podcast I don't know um, just so that I can put clickable uh, show note links up there so you guys can easily find what I'm talking about because I love that Ravelry lets you ear burn and do clickable links and all that fun stuff so alright thank you for joining me we hope to see you soon bye